The world is changing rapidly from IC engines to electric motors, from manual sticks to automatics and CVTs. And then we have Volvo right here. They introduced the XC40 in India only with a diesel option initially, but now we have just a petrol version and that's what we are here to drive. Why you ask? Well, the answer is simple, for a cleaner and greener future. But before we begin, I would request you to subscribe to our channel if you want more automotive content in your feed and also make sure that you hit the bell icon so that you are notified instantly whenever we publish a video. With that done, let's get on with the rest of the review. Now for the uninitiated, let me rewind a little. Volvo initially introduced their baby SUV in the XC lineup, that is the XC40 in India, back in 2018. The car was doing well in other regions, so the company decided it made sense to bring this to India, and that too with a 2-litre diesel motor. But now, the company wants to change with the world. They are not one to be left behind, and they have pledged to get rid of all their diesel engines and this is a step in that same direction, a petrol powered XC40 R design. Let me warn you that not a lot has changed on this car. It is essentially the same one that was launched back in 2018. So not many changes have been made except for the powertrain being different. So while you used to get a 2-litre 4-cylinder diesel, now you have an equally big 2-litre 4-cylinder petrol motor. But obviously the output figures are different. You get the power of 190 horses and you have about 300 newton meters of torque to play around with. All this power is filtered through an 8-speed automatic transmission. Now I'll admit it's not the best in the business, it's not the quickest in the business, but if you are just driving around in the city or even when you do float the accelerator, the gear changes are mostly not noticeable. You do have paddle shifts, but uh, when you use them, then of course flicking between gears does take a little bit of deliberation and a little bit of thinking on the car's part. So it's best if you keep it in the auto mode. As for the power delivery, it's very linear, it's very refined. That is actually one thing that I really like about this car. The petrol motor is extremely silent, refined and free of any kind of vibration. Thanks to the great NVH levels, the cabin experience is very quiet. This is not a car uh, which will pin you back in your seat when you press the accelerator. This climbs up speeds in a very linear fashion. But make no mistake that this lacks power. It can easily do triple digit speeds and even maintain them without breaking a sweat. However, Volvo has limited the top speed to 230 km per hour. But something tells me that that is going to be enough for our Indian roads. As for the suspension, it has been tuned so well that it can easily take bumpy roads like these or even steep speed breakers or sudden ditches very easily. A little modulation of the speed and you will glide over any kind of bump coming in your way. That is not going to be a problem. And even in the corners or when you're pushing this car, this car will stay pliant and stiff and will inspire a lot of confidence. However, one thing to note is that while in the diesel model, the power was sent to all four wheels, in the petrol version, the power only goes to the front wheels, which means that when you push this car hard, you will notice the lack of uh, grip and confidence that you would get from the diesel version. But of course, if you're driving daily in normal city usage conditions or if you're just going to office and coming back, then you won't notice uh, the change because the car does provide a lot of grip and there is not a lot of understeer to uh, point out in normal usage. As for the brakes, you have 17-inch discs at the front and 16-inch ones at the rear. They provide a lot of bite and they also have good amount of progression. So, in case a stray animal walks across on the road and you have to brake suddenly or if you have to stop gradually before a red light, the car can do both 
easily. You have to just modulate the brake lever and it will do your bidding. I was floored by the design philosophy of the XC40 back when it was launched in 2018 and that same thing holds true even now. I'm still blown away by the clean and precise lines running all across this car. There is not a lot of drama happening all across. At the front and on the sides you will see some parts have been blacked out to justify the S in SUV. So you get a blacked out front grille, front bumper, the entire top is blacked out along with the roof and you have uh, the wheel arch claddings and the side claddings they are all in black along with the outside rear view mirrors. So they give this vehicle quite a sporty look and quite a sporty stance from afar. And then at the front you obviously have these signature LED headlamps which can automatically bend for better visibility at night. So that is a great addition. Even the turn indicators are embedded into this. So the same unit acts as a DRL and a turn indicator. Moving to the side, you will find 18 inch alloy wheels, which I find to have one of the best designs in this segment. They are very clean, precisely done, and yeah, they look generally very good. Other than that, the side does not have, like I said, a lot of drama going on, except for the R design badging over at the back. Over at the back, you will find these L-shaped tail lights. These are LED tail lights and they've become synonymous with the Volvo name. Other than that, you have a curvy boot, which gives it a nice and muscular look. You have the Volvo badging, the XC40 badging and the T4R design badging, which all lend it a nice look. And then you have a blacked out bumper once again. Now, since we are at the back, let me tell you about the boot and how you can open it. There are plenty of ways to do that. You obviously have a button on the inside which you can use to open this up, but you also have a button right here. You press it and the tailgate opens. It's an electronically adjustable tailgate, so you don't have to push and pull to open or close it. And you have buttons right here, but what I'll do is I'll use another way of closing this. So on the key fob, you have a button which you can press and hold and then this happens. Neat, isn't it? But in case you have the key fob with you, but your hands are full with, I don't know, any items that you might be carrying, then all you have to do is swipe under the boot and it opens up. And in case you have your hands full, that's not going to be a problem because you have a cavernous boot with more than 400 liters of storage space. So keeping things will not be a problem at all. Now being a Volvo, the car is very safe, providing driver and passenger side airbag along with knee and side airbags. The car also gets radar based features like lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, and runoff road mitigation and they all work great. The interior of the XC40 is very much a reflection of its exterior. The neat and clean design pleases the eye. You get the car in an all black interior. There was an option of a lava orange color earlier but that has now been omitted and personally I do not mind it a lot. Although, Volvo officials have said that they are open to providing more interior color options if the customers demand it. At the center of the dashboard area, you will find a vertical 9-inch touchscreen infotainment system that offers all kinds of features that you would expect from a car in this category. The touch response is undoubtedly the best in the business and almost like your smartphone. The XC40 also gets a 14-speaker Harman Kardon sound system to please your inner audiophile. You obviously get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and there is a wireless charging pad too. You get a leather wrapped steering with steering mounted controls. It feels nice to hold and is very light, a little too light maybe, but at least it can point the car in the right direction with minimal effort. I would have liked it better if it felt more connected to the road though. You get vanity mirrors for both the driver and the co-passenger along with the light. You get large door pockets that can hold 1 litre bottles and some more things along with it. There are two cup holders on the center console and storage spaces under the armrest along with a small dustbin. The driver and co-passenger seat are power operated and get four-way lumbar support adjustment. The driver side seat also comes with a memory function. While earlier you used to get a mix of Alcantara and leather for the seats, now it is just leather. 
The seats are nice and comfortable and can snugly hold you in one place. You will definitely appreciate the panoramic sunroof on this car on a day when the weather is particularly good. Now here in the second row of the XC40, I must admit things aren't looking great for this car, especially if you are a person as tall as me. I'm six feet tall and um, I do feel that I have uh, less than ideal amount of leg room. The knee room is fine, but the under thigh support is almost non-existent and the seats also are a little too upright for my liking. On top of that, you also have these headrests, which oddly enough cannot be adjusted. They are fixed headrests, but there is a headrest for the center passenger, which can be adjusted easily. So a bit of an odd choice, uh, but the seat cushioning is quite fine, it's decent, you have isofix mounts and you also get a center armrest with cup holders, so that is good and you also get uh, seat back pockets for both the driver and the co-passenger seat and uh, you have individual AC controls and AC vents for the rear passengers and down here you have a type C charging socket which is quite a, a good addition. Uh, not a lot of uh, people have a type C to type C cable, but if you do have it, you will definitely enjoy this convenience. It's definitely better than having a, a normal 12 volt pocket. The door pockets also house a decent amount of space. You cannot keep a water bottle in here, but Volvo has given uh, an additional storage space right beside the seats, so that is good. Uh, at the center you will see that the transmission tunnel does protrude out a lot so my guess is that it's not going to be very comfortable with three people in the second row of the XC40. There is no denying that uh, the second row is a bit of a cramp for uh, taller people. Now remember this is just our first drive review. We do a lot of interior reviews so if you want a proper and full interior review of this car make sure that you subscribe and you will find that we will be getting this car uh, after some time and we will do a proper interior review exploring all the features that it has. The XC40 R design will cost you about 39.99 lakh rupees X showroom and that price is pretty much up there with its competitors like the Audi Q3, BMW X1 and Mercedes GLA. I do feel that the XC40 looks a lot better and smarter and I would definitely feel much more safe when inside a Volvo. It is also a great car for daily use because of the light steering wheel and the calm and composed nature of the engine. The linear climb along with the smooth automatic transmission will be your best buddy on congested city roads. But I do feel that Volvo could have benefited from a more aggressive price tag, especially considering the things that they have omitted. So those were my first thoughts on the new Volvo XC40 R design which now gets a petrol motor. If you still happen to have any more questions, then make sure to write them down in the comments below. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. And for now, this is Akash signing off, telling you to have a safe drive and a safe ride anytime that you go out. Bye-bye.